Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. Holly Shields here for Calcine TV. Welcome you all to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. The show where we share with you industry leaders, successful business owners and market experts all under one roof to help you discover the latest business insights. Today we're joined by Mr. Manish Chopra of Health, the Health Tech Pioneers at Shifa Care, the multi-user and multilingual healthcare ecosystem that uses AI, epidemiology, genetic sequencing driven by prediction and much more. Welcome to the show Manish, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Hello, how are you and good afternoon to viewers. Hi there, great to have you on. First of all, a congratulations is in order. Shifa Care was the winner of Top 50 Companies Advancing Healthcare by IA, IFAH sorry, 2019. What are the key drivers of the success? So, uh, I was heading up Asia Pacific for number one pharmaceutical company and I saw this enormous gap in access to uh, people are spending more money on travel to see a doctor than actual cost treatment. And that's where I was born. And we were awarded the most progressive healthcare company because we are the only platform where you can choose a doctor who speaks your language out of 100 languages and another specialist who speaks your language. And you can get the medical consultation from your phone. And That's incredible. This way, one doctor. Sorry, just having some audio issues there. That's incredible. Did you say it was 100 languages or somewhere about that uh, yes. a customer could choose from? 100 languages. That is amazing. Obviously, very well serviced there. Now, online medical consultation, consultation sorry, have seen a spike like no other time in the past few months. How has Shifakea risen to the challenge of increased demand in this phase? So Shifa picked up the market signal very early. Uh, the matter of fact is it was illegal in Australia pre-COVID to have a teleconsultation. And we already launched the program in India and now we're working with the Medicare uh, to launch in Australia. That's really interesting. It was illegal, did you say? Correct. Mm -hmm. You cannot be bulk billed as a patient on Medicare to consult a doctor over the phone. And any prescription generated over the phone do not have legal standing. Very interesting. And um, how recently has that law changed? So that changed in March and e-prescription is mandatory in Australia from November this year. So paper prescription will go all out. So no more paper prescription. Wow, that's really interesting. That must have been a really big change to the industry. Uh, it is a big change. Uh, however, uh, the consumer awareness uh, have not been created by government and the regulatory bodies. We would like to see a campaign because if November is around the corner and if there will be no paper prescription, all moms and dads like they used to for the paper prescription and just saying you will have the 2d barcode prescription on your phone some people don't have a phone and we have not seen in, in, in the mainstream the awareness of that change all right that's obviously quite concerning indeed now you deal with telemedicine in your app could you tell us about some of the key features on this app so one of the most uh, critical thing we saw, we did our market research, 30 to 40% people over 65 in Australia, they do not speak English at home as a native language. And that is a significant barrier to healthcare. So first thing we conquered was Yes, I live in Australia. However, if I want to speak to a Punjabi specialist who's, who's fluent in Punjabi, uh, I should be able to search it uh, regardless of distance. Uh, it's Melbourne. And one must know India is the largest exporter 
of doctors around the world. So you will find a language uh, which is suitable to you and you'll find a doctor who speaks your language. So we made it multilingual. Absolutely. Second thing That's... was like, yeah. Sorry, continue. Second thing was, say, I am working in Sydney and my mom lives in Orange or Double uh, in a country, Australia, yeah? And she is visiting an oncologist. Current scenario is I have to take time off uh, to be with her and go to oncologist and ask the questions and the treatment plan and the progressive nature of the. Now we made it multi user. So means you can have more than one doctor and more than one family member on there. It's five ways. So I'll give you a scenario. So mom will go to local GP in Orange. So she do not need to travel to Sydney anymore. GP will connect to the oncologist in Sydney. I will be on that call as well as son or carer or parer. So I can pay for mom's treatment or I can be a carer and, and have access to the health records. So this way, all four people on one call make a treatment plan and move. And that makes it a because I'm still in my office. I been with my mom's oncologist. I spoke to the GP. GP have translated that to mom. And mom is nice and easy at home. So that that's important. Third thing is Shifa Australia will be fully bulk billed by Australian Medicare. So each time you make an appointment, you do not need to worry about how I'll pay or anything. As long as your Medicare number is well, you will be connected to a doctor you want and you will get a e prescription which you can send to it or we can help you deliver. So someone who's really sick, last thing you want to do in the Corona time, especially in the community. So that will be happening. Right. That's incredible. It sounds like you've really um, opened up the, the lines of last one you will love this Holly in there as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And last one is you make an appointment with Daya and you every five minutes to see a GP. We have taken that barrier out. We, the algorithm in there, it will connect you to first of all, Australia wide. So you can choose out of 22,000 GPs. And I am pretty confident all busy at the so next available GP will be with you in Kent. That's you incredible. Have your script done and that is it from your car. Where That's amazing. It sounds like you've made the process very efficient indeed. Uh, we have to because look all other industries, yeah, at Amazon. It, it, what you bought, what you did, how, what your payment preferences are, what your preferred address is, all those kind of clicks, what you watch, what you may like. Kind of. Healthcare we have seen still 80s, where people were dying with cholesterol and high blood pressure. It's not the case anymore. Cholesterol is a lifestyle disease these days, rather than being a disease which used to cause heart attacks. And health tech somewhere there is a hesitancy to get into it because of the regulatory requirements. So technology companies are not investing into it. Uh, more people will come in this. There's a, a lot more to do. Uh, we will talk later on about those things. But I, I strongly believe technology can significantly improve the access to healthcare. Mm. Right. Very interesting point. You mentioned technology, and I know you work with AI as well. Do you think that AI is the future of medicine? If it is perhaps the future of medicine, how so do you think uh, we take or I strong AI significantly in medicine? The reason for that is the doctor you consult today went to university probably in the 70s.
from then till now, they would have attended continuous education program once or twice a year. But millions of new clinical trials published. There is no capacity of human brain can consume the amount of clinical literature available on this planet. Only AI can do that. It can be a very two for the years of learning. Absolutely, I completely agree. That's a very good point. Obviously, the human brain is definitely limited, and obviously, human error plays a big factor in some medical error as well. Absolutely, absolutely. And the point on AI is, uh, we will be seeking in future uh, when a patient connects to the doctor via a video call. Yeah, taking your Temperature signature. If your skin tone, it will be capturing your voice signature. And it will have your base pictures. And when next time you in flu and talking to a doctor, or you have an attack, you talking to a doctor and you got some wheezing, that changes your noise signature of your breathing. AI will suggest the doctor look. It's a 95% match to asthma symptoms, or 98% match to a flu symptom. And that will assist doctor to make a improved diagnosis rather than just going on to gut feel. Very good point. So they're obviously working together, the AI and human capabilities there to deliver the best service possible. Absolutely. And if someone is planning to send kids to the school for med school, I probably I will not suggest that. <laughs> good point. Now, speaking of smart healthcare, what are the challenges that you're noticing in smart healthcare in Australia and how can they be addressed? The smart healthcare is breaking the change and it's making all about the individuals. It comes to the doctors or the patients. Yeah? So currently, if you look at in the healthcare system, uh, it's funny, we don't observe that. As a patient, you are paying for it, yeah? However, the choices for your treatment are made by someone else who is receiving money, and dispensing choices of the medicine are made by someone else who is receiving your money. As a consumer, you have no choice. That's the biggest challenge. And I think if I pay for something, I must have a choice what treatment I will seek as well as what treatment choice I will get. And Technology will do that. Smart healthcare will do that because I will not be limited to a GP in my suburbia when I can have access to 22,000 GPs in Australia. I can read reviews. I can see their customer service. And that's an important point. In med school, they do not teach customer service, how to deal with patients, with communication skills. It's all about medicine, 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 and smart healthcare will change that. Very good point, and that's obviously a very welcome change because there is obviously a need for customer service even in the medical sphere as well. Now you yep. talk about ADMs, that is automatic dispensing machines for the viewers that don't know. Could you tell us a bit more about it? That's my life's vision. Um, uh, ADMs, I call them, and uh, automated dispensing machines. I see their role because if you want to fill your script, say 8 o'clock at night, that's where your shift work finished. You cannot. And that's unacceptable in 21st century. Like you do not have access to doctor and you do not have access to a pharmacy. Yeah. ADMs will dispense your medicine with your e-prescription on your phone on every single corner, like a Coke or Pepsi machine. And there will be a virtual touch screen available. If you want to speak to a pharmacist, you can request pharmacists on demand and those pharmacists might be working from home. They log on to the portal and when the job comes, they appear. It does not limit by the geography, area, day or night. You, you can choose to work one hour, two hours, five hours a day. So it's, it's a win-win for everyone. And also ADMs being a network, uh, I invested almost 5,000 ADMs in Australia in the next, next 10 years. The cost of procurement will be so 
advanced so you will be getting the finest medicine on a very cost effective price right which would be absolutely revolutionary obviously how far away do you think we are from that development uh, we we have the prototype uh, however we uh, seeking funding after the Medicare launch in Australia and we'll start with a pilot probably in 2024 because uh, one should remember the accuracy need to be 100% so when I say 100% means it's not the machine dispenses thousand times out of thousand times the correct medicine that's not 100% in medicine it has to be 100 million times out of 100 million times it dispenses the medicine correctly that's where the accuracy need to be and only artificial intelligence will do that i would like to make a point there as well like current role of pharmacist is there because pharmacists do not get the appropriate labeling on the medicine so they have to put extra stickers on that need to change as well because if a medicine makes you sleepy, that's the correct characteristic of that medicine is. So it should come with the pre-printed label on it rather than a human being standing there and then putting the label on and it's costing money to taxpayers. A very good point. It's obviously all about the cost effectiveness down the line as well. And that's something that idioms, as you mentioned, will probably reduce. So that is excellent to hear. And hopefully we do see that roll out in the near future. I think it was 2024, did you mention? Yes. Well, hopefully it's a bit sooner than that. Fingers crossed on that uh, note, though. Technologies are there. Okay. Technologies <laughs> are there. Uh, I, I visited Amazon's warehouse in Japan. Uh, no, no single person whatsoever. And they manage 2 million SKUs, 2 million items. And it it does everything by itself. So technology is out there. It's just a matter of fact is adoption, uh, making it right and getting the regulatory approvals. And then we are on. Very good point. Well, hopefully, hopefully that is still sooner than anticipated, though. On that note, it's just about all we have time for today. Thank but you. I've got to uh, say, we, we, we think so as well. Great to hear, yes. And I've got to say thanks so much for joining our show today. It's been really good to hear insights. Pleasure to have you on. Viewers, if you've just joined us, we've had a stellar discussion with Mr. Manish Chabra of Shifa Care. You can catch this edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks on the Calkine channel later today. But for now, thanks for your time and stay tuned to Calkine TV for more live updates.